All right, so what I've done here today is map out the states of consciousness. In reality, it's just one state of consciousness, but it's a field. And we can also think of it as innervation flow or nerve control. Innervation is to supply with nerves or to supply with energy. And we have two mechanisms for this. On this x-axis here, we have the autonomic nervous system and its two branches, with, which is the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. So rest and digest, feed and breed, and fight or flight. Its most extreme activation is in trauma or survival situations, which doesn't necessarily mean it's life and death, but your reaction to it is the sort of maximum survival fight or flight situation. The sympathetic nervous system innervates nearly every tissue and organ in the body. On the y-axis here, we have visual innervation, so as we go from low to high, visual signals, we could also call this hypnotizability. You go from calm to focus to trance to sleep activation to the ecstatic states or seizure states. Now the nerves are going to flow based off of environmental conditions, chemical reactions, conditioned responses, reflexes to situations, but they can also be directed by you. You can choose to focus on things you could calm your nervous system down or you can increase it. You can hype yourself up or psych yourself up. So these plots here, which we'll go through and label, they're here as reference points. Because the innervation flow is, it'll ramp up or it'll calm down or it'll shoot in different directions. That's why it's one state of consciousness and not, there's altered states of consciousness, but it's just the, the mechanism of nerve flow either through the visual signals or the autonomic nervous system and where you land in that. We're simply labeling as reference points and not that there's necessarily any defined things, but it's as a map, it helps you to understand where you're at with your nervous system and your visual signals in order to understand the state you're in and how to either get out of it or increase it or whatever the situation may call for. Keep in mind, visual signals compete in conscious attention with pain signals. So as your visual signals increase, they override your body's ability to feel pain. That doesn't stop you from being able to move your body or anything like that. It simply stops out pain reception. So let's take a look at this first point here. When your visual signals are calm, which means there's low visual innervation, and your parasympathetic nervous system is activated, you're in a state of rest. So calm and rest, we can call that peace. We got peace of mind. Now, the most important thing to keep in mind is that these words, what we're gonna label these points, they're not objective to the actual state that you feel. Because what happens if you're in calm and rest for too long? Well, then you get into states of depression or lethargy or inactivity. So it's important to understand that the body needs to be able to move between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. And the more time you spend in one extreme, the more time you'll jump to another extreme. The innervation will, will go from one extreme and then need to rest at longer periods of time unless you're able to balance it into this sort of sweet spot that we're going to label zone right here. Also, ignore these little smudges. My left hand is so I keep smudging the... Ink. But this is a good example of how we're going to label them it's as reference points and don't necessarily be attached to the objective meaning of the word. Um, and again, it could apply to, you could be anywhere around here. There's an infinite number of points that you could have. It's simply visual innervation here and autonomic innervation here. So when the autonomic nervous system is balanced and visual signals are calm, we're in a state of high. You could also say you're elated or euphoric. It's a state of calm and balance. When the sympathetic nervous system is activated and the visual signals are calm, we're in a state of surge, or we could say motivation. You're activated, you're ready to go, and you're doing stuff, but you're not you're not in your visual system. Visual innervation is calm. You're simply in a calm fight mode. In 
full activation of the sympathetic nervous system in trauma or survival situations with calm visual signals, we could call this sixth sense. What this means is your body is almost reacting before you realize what's happening, before you notice what's happening. Think of a parent whose child is about to fall and without them even paying attention, their body is moved in reaction to that to catch their kid. Or without realizing it, there's a car incoming and you're able to move out of the way before you even notice that the car was actually coming. It's basically your body is reacting before you even consciously pick up information because your visual signals are calmed, yet your body has gone into full fight mode. And usually it exits that fight mode as soon as the situation is resolved. But if the situation doesn't resolve, you'll probably end up focusing more. So we can look at this next point up here, which we can call the last stand. Now the last stand is like being, you're accepting the situation in that you have to be in that situation for a longer period of time. If the quick escape or the quick save is prolonged, you'll likely end up focusing. You'll increase visual innervation. You're in a focused trauma survival reaction. And again, this is based off of the level of nerves that are being sent from the visual system or to the sympathetic nervous system. When you're at rest and focused, over here you're in a state of clarity. And again, the line between this is not so defined as being points, but we can just see as the nerves increase, you enter into something we can label just for a reference point so you know where you are. And they could go from any direction. They could zigzag, they can jump around. It's just a field of consciousness and the level of nerve activity going from the autonomic or the visual system. Clarity is being in a smooth state. You're thinking things through or you're doing some activity that isn't activating your sympathetic nervous system. You're still calm, you're still at rest, but you're having an elucidation of thoughts. You're able to focus on something, maybe it's some sort of work or paper that you're writing. You're in a, a well-balanced, rested state. But what happens when the visual signals, you keep focusing on them, you keep sending signals through the visual system, you enter into a trance. When you're at rest though, this trance state is what we call dissociation. We could also call it derealization or depersonalization. You are now starting to cut off feeling in your body and your body is at rest. It's lethargic. You're, you're daydreaming off, you're wandering off. And this could be driving a car, this could be watching TV, this could just be focused on something or a situation that leaves you inactive that you can't do anything about and you're kind of you're staring off and you're you're lost in your visual system you're in a trance that's dissociation but i'll leave this at part one and we'll continue to talk about all these other points and continue to hash out all the details of these other ones in future parts uh, thanks for watching